August 25th, 2014, Council meeting to order. Everybody's already uh, risen, so could you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The old man in first. <laughs> Denny knows. That's Denny. <clears throat> I can like him. Clerk, please call the roll. Hilberg. Here. Colasar. Here. Lamb. Here. Rose. Here. Shields. Here. Simpson. Here. Coin. Here. Reading of the minutes, Mr. President. Mr. Shields. I move that the minutes of the July 14th and the July 24th meetings as prepared and submitted by the clerk be approved. Second. Any, any discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Colasar. Yes. Lamb. Yes. Rose. Yes. Shields. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Coyne. Yes. Hilberg. Yes. Motion passes 7-0. Reports of standing committees. The Finance Committee met prior to council this evening for a short two hours and 15 minute meeting. Uh, Health, Safety and Sanitation Committee. Mr. Rose. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, while we didn't keep meet, you know, compete with you in your two hours and 15 <laughs> minutes, the Safety and Health Committee did meet on Ju uh, July 15th, and uh, we agreed and passed the uh, reorganization of the police department, which we will be discussing at the next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Public Properties Committee, Mr. Shields. Thank you, Mr. President. Also during the break, the Public Properties met. We had one major issue that we discussed, which was the cemetery and the uh, new buildings that will be located there. And we discussed that tonight at Finance, and it will be on a future council meeting. No other meeting scheduled. Thank you. Special Legislation Committee, Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Mr. President. Special legislation is not met, but as soon as we can look at our calendars, we will meet this month. Thank you, Streets and Sidewalks Committee, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we hope to have a Streets and Sidewalk <coughs> meeting scheduled sometime in the later part of September. Thank you, and Water Utilities Committee, Mr. Colzar. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we did not meet over the break, but just like uh, Mr. Simpson, we're gonna try to have a Water and Utilities meeting scheduled late September. Thank you. Request for council action. Okay, be ready for this one. For the Finance Committee, we have Addendum to 14-145 Spring Grove Building Project Lease Agreement, Addendum to 14-123 Police Department Reorganization, 14-147 Expenditure of $15,000 to Epic Aviation, 14-148 Budget Amendments, 14-149 Five-Year Capital Improvement Plan for the MCRC, 14-150 Then and Now for Medical Consultants for Business Fire Department, 14-151 Then and Now for Borden Perlman Insurance for the Railroad, 14152 then and now for Winthrow Construction Engineering. 14153 Income Tax Allocation Adjustment. 14154 Authorized Expenditure for Purchase of Masonic Temple. 14155 Amending Salaries and Benefits Code Approved Modified Job Description for Cable TV. 14156 Purchase of 1 2014 Police Interceptor for SUV with Equipment. 14157 Purchase of 1 Smeal Fire Pumper with Aerial Device. 14158 Rerouting of Buckeye Trail through Medina, 14159 Lake Medina and Reagan Parkway Trail Connector, 14160 Increased PO 2014 00646 Residex LLC, 14161 Expenditure over $15,000 for winter equipment for the streets, 14162 Submittal of Bid on CPF Contract, 14163 Discussion Place Name City of Medina on City Water Towers, 14164 30th Anniversary Candlelight Walk Celebration, 14165 agreement with TM Associates Champion Creek Restoration. 14166 revocable use permit for 122 Public Square. 14167 rezoning several properties from R3 to C2 on West Smith Road. 14168 expenditure over $15,000 for Middle Ohio Concrete. 14169 Spring Grove Bridge Replacement Design Build Process. 14170 grant application, Ohio Public Works Commission. 14171 agreement with HNTB Ohio West Smith Road Reconstruction. 14172 easements, four of them for Wadsworth Road Water Main. 14173 easements, five of them for Lancaster Drive drainage improvements. 14174, one easement for Forest Meadow drainage improvements. And 14178 amending ordinance 12714 Public Square Restroom and Visitor Center. That's it for finance. 
Special legislation, we have one, 14175, amending section 114712 of the sign code. And Streets and Sidewalks Committee has two, 14176, new traffic light at East Strawbridge and Wadsworth Road, and 14177, reconstruct brick section on South Broadway. That is it. <clears throat> Reports of municipal officers. Mayor Hanwell. Thank you, Mr. President. The um, new city website is uh, working well. Most people are using it to uh, download the uh, applications and uh, permit processes, um, and as well as seeing the updates that we're putting on there. If uh, council or the public has any other suggestions of what would be helpful or what is missing, um, we're more than eager to, to hear those. Uh, this past Saturday, August 23rd, Main Street Medina hosted the International Festival and estimated that they had about 15,000 uh, visitors. Um, I was up there during the afternoon and ran into uh, a number of people who approached me from out of town as well as out of state and uh, thanked the city uh, for, for having the event, uh, for how well it was put on and, and commenting on how beautiful the downtown uh, and the square and uh, the city in general are. The state of the city will be uh, presented to city council tonight uh, following this meeting and uh, will also be presented to the Medina Area Chamber of Commerce on Tuesday, September 2nd from 11.30 to 1 p.m. at the Weymouth Country Club. And tickets are necessary and available uh, through the Medina Area Chamber of Commerce located at 145 North Court Street. And then um, unusual today, uh, we have uh, two different groups for proclamations. So uh, first I would like to um, invite up Donald and Ryan Wheeler. I have uh, individual proclamations for uh, Donald and Ryan, uh, who were instrumental in assisting our police department, who was involved in a who were were involved in a foot pursuit uh, into their neighborhood, and the uh, suspect uh, made the bad decision uh, to run through their yard. And uh, the Wheelers, the Wheelers graciously um, assisted us, assisted our police department in apprehending and holding the uh, subject until the police could get there and place them in custody. So each of your uh, proclamations reads, the heroic acts demonstrated by Donald Wheeler and Ryan Wheeler on July 18th, 2014 is a true example of genuine concern for the welfare of other human beings. And whereas the city of Medina is honored to pay tribute to Donald Wheeler and Ryan Wheeler for their assistance in apprehending a suspect being pursued by the police officers, Donald saw the suspect heading towards his property and went into action, tackling the suspect. Both men detained him until the officers arrived on the scene. And whereas Donald and Ryan took the initiative to assist the police officers and put their own safety at risk, now, therefore, I, Dennis Hanwell, Mayor of the City of Medina, to hereby commend Donald and Ryan Wheeler for their heroic actions and assistance in apprehending a suspect, in witness whereof I, I have hereby set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Medina to be affixed hereto this 25th day of August in 2014. Thank you. Would you like to say anything, sir? Sure. Would you like to say anything? Would you like to speak? Okay, and secondly, I'd like to invite up uh, Medina's Ra Rangers coach, Tom Delac and the team. <laughs> sure. Hi, sir. How are you? Great. Welcome. Thank you. So the Medina Rangers um, had an outstanding 2014 uh, season as you'll hear from this uh, proclamation and that's why we invited them here. The proclamation reads, whereas the Medina Rangers under coach Tom Delac and his staff is to be recognized and honored for their outstanding 2014 baseball season. 
where, whereas by its extraordinary efforts, this dynamic team has won the first ever state youth baseball championship for the Medina community and ended the season with an amazing record of 24 and six. And whereas the excellent performance, dedication, and commitment of these young men, along with their coaching staff, have proven to be a source of admiration and inspiration to this community. Now, therefore, I, Dennis Hanwell, Mayor of the City of Medina, do hereby honor the Medina Rangers and your coaching staff for their outstanding achievements and commend them for their display of sportsmanship and leadership. In witness whereof, I have hereby set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Medina to be affixed here, too. And, Coach, if you would, I'd like you to introduce the players and your coaching staff. Be happy to. Thank you. All right, it's not the entire team, but uh, those representing today, start with uh, Anthony Garapik, Danny Robertson, Mitch Utek, Zach DeMarco, Patrick Kaczynski, Colin McClowry, Danny Beebe, Kevin Standen, Brendan Delac. And right on time, Dylan Radebaugh. <laughs> <laughs> Coaching staff includes uh, Bill Beebe, Tom DeMarco, Mike Garapik, uh, Brian Standen, Andre Hall. Uh, and the boys that are missing are Matt Hall, Regan Kistler, and Adam Danzak. I think that's everybody. Yeah. All right. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you and congratulations. Keith Durham, Director of Finance. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, apparently the financial reports are much less interesting than that. <laughs> um, the time. budgets for the general fund have all been turned in. I got the last of them today, so I'll be able to get them all entered and passed out tomorrow. And then we'll be done. We'll have all the budgets submitted and be on with that process. Thank you. Mr. Huber, Law Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Chief Baraducci, Police Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Ms. Rice, Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a couple of items. Um, I think probably all of you are aware, but for the public, uh, the city was awarded the $300,000 downtown revitalization grant. We did get the official notification from the state, as well as a $300,000 critical infrastructure grant. And um, so we're pretty excited about that. And that was a result of the um, submitting the downtown strategic plan. That's my report. Thank you, Mr. Mandel, Planning and Community Development Director. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you. Chief Painter, Fire Chief. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Wright, Recreation Center Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Just two quick things. Uh, the new fall brochure for the MCRC is available now on our website at uh, medinarec.org and the uh, front desk of the Rec Center, of course. And our next Rec Advisory Board meeting is Thursday, September 18th at 7.30. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Worley, the uh, Parks and Recreation Center Director. Thank you, Mr. President. Hey, Recreation Director, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just to let everybody know, the splash pads will remain open through Labor Day, depending on the weather. Um, secondly, you'll notice that there are two areas closed off on the square. Uh, the Parks Department's in the middle of a turf renovation project, and we appreciate uh, everybody's patience and cooperation as we continue to beautify the square. Thank you. Thank you. Dan Gladish, building official. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report at this time. This is your first report, and you have no report. I like that. That's, I like that I a lot. Prepared. That's great. Mr. Patton, City Engineer. Thank you. Uh, updates on a couple of projects. First of all, the US-42 and Route 3 resurfacing. Uh, ODOT, beginning tonight, uh, August 25th, we'll be doing night work in and around the square. Uh, there will be no parking um, in the areas uh, around the square after 8 o'clock that are marked. Uh, that work should take about a week. It'll be every evening, uh, hopefully weather permitting, they'll be completed on Friday. In addition, this morning, uh, the, the railroad began their replacement of the railroad crossing at uh, State Route 3, South Court Street, uh, between Smith and Lafayette. There is a local detour set up. 
Uh, there is no traffic permitted across this area, so the road is closed. It will be open, open by uh, Friday or Saturday. Secondly, Gunnison Court, uh, as the residents know, but to alert the public, uh, we did remove pavement there last week. Uh, beginning this week, we'll be doing the concrete replacement. Uh, the folks on Gunnison Court won't be able to park there for the remainder of this week, uh, but by the end of this week or first of next week, we'll reopen the street. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Piccoli, Service Director. Thank you, Mr. President. I have no report this evening. Thank you. Oh. Is there oh, nobody else done there? Okay, just checking. Notice of communication petitions, there are none, unfinished business, none, introduction of visitors. <clears throat> Members of the public will be permitted the opportunity to speak on any issue or concern which pertains to the city during the portion of the council agenda devoted to introduction of visitors. All comments shall be directed to the chair and a reasonable time limit of approximately five minutes will be imposed. If there is a group, please appoint a spokesperson. Speakers should approach the front right microphone and state your name and address so it can be entered into the minutes. Members of the public will be afforded the opportunity to comment on other portions of the meeting as determined by the chair or by a vote of the majority, members, majority of council members present. Is there anybody that wishes to address council at this town, time? Mr. Lamb, I think you have a Thank presentation. You. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I asked uh, Charlie and Beth Raymer to uh, come to council tonight so that I could give them something and, and uh, make a few brief comments about the fact that they just purchased one of what might well be the most historic house in the city of Medina, and it has a curious history. Charlie Raymer, of course, was um, when I was mayor, Charlie was my service director, and many years ago, I sat somewhere over here, and Charlie sat somewhere over here when we were a lot younger, and, and, and Beth, his wife, Charlie and, and Beth um, restored a house on South Court Street, and um, eventually they left and moved to Arizona. They recently bought the Munson House. The Munson House is, is recognized as one of the most historic houses in Medina for a number of reasons. First of all, because it was the home of Albert Munson, who was a probate, probate judge in Medina. He was significant in the election of William McKinley, and he held frequent, numerous seances in his house, and he believed that he had seen the spirit not only of, of, of McKinley, but of Abraham Lincoln. And um, he, there are photographs to prove that. The curious story of the Munson House is this. It was slated for, um, it was given to the Historical Society by, by the county when the Historical Society moved to the Smart House. The Munson House was slated for demolition. And in the scramble to find a way to save that house, the Letha House Foundation stepped in and provided the $100,000 that was necessary to move it. So the Munson House was moved from Washington Street through the square to South Prospect Street, and it became the headquarters of the community, community Design Committee, the group that restored the square. But it was no longer a house. It was an office building with a restoration inside that was nice, but it was not a home. The other curious part of the story is this, and I'll make it short. Charlie and Beth were in Arizona, and the house was so well known that when Charlie and Beth realized that the Munson house was for sale because the CDC was moving to the square, they came back to Medina to buy the Munson house and to return the Munson house to its original state as a home. So the Munson house went from being a home in one location, moved way around a few blocks, became an office building, and now it is returned to being a home. And I thought it was, it was quite appropriate to recognize the efforts that they're putting into it to um, make that a, a residential, an historic residential home in the new neighborhood that it has on South Prospect Street, no longer an office building. And to also give them And to give them two things. One is, is the beautiful rendition of the home that was done by Ken Lipstrew, who was a founding member of the Community Design Committee. When the house was moved and was being restored, he did the rendering of the house so that it could be painted and look exactly like it, it should look. And it seemed to me and the other members of the Community Design Committee that that belonged back in the home uh, for the Raymers to share uh, while they are there. And the other thing I have to give you, which you can, you can frame and make it look even better, are photographs of Albert Munson, his daughter Cora, and one photograph of Albert Munson with the spirits that he had conjured up through his seances. So 
appreciate the work that the Ramers have done. It's great to see them back in Medina one more time and to see particularly Charlie back at City Hall. Yes. Anything you want to say? Um, we realize that the house is not our house. It's the public's house. And we fully expect that we will have it available for tours and for occasions. And uh, we just happen to be the people who are now charged with maintaining it for the next generation. And that's how we understand our role. But it is a gorgeous piece of property. It's a gorgeous home. And it will remain a piece of, uh, you know, an important piece of legacy in Medina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome back. <laughs> Introduction and oh, is there anybody else that wishes to address council? I'm sorry. Yeah, I think there's. I guess there's really no podium. There's just a microphone. <clears throat> that's way out there. You always do, but that's okay. Good evening. I'm Mark Phillips. Tonight, I'm representing the uh, Stephen Siller Tunnel to Towers Foundation, and it's an honor for our community to be hosting the 9/11 never forget exhibit that will go on display here in Medina tomorrow morning starting at 10 a.m. Um, coming up in less than two weeks is our 5k run and walk the tunnel the to towers run which will be September 14th on Medina Public Square um, with me tonight I have two members of the FDNY who travel with the exhibit and I'd like to bring up uh, Battalion Chief Jack Ohm to say a few words about the exhibit and what people could expect to see. It's, uh, like I said, it's a great honor to be part of the organization and to bring these events to our community. Uh, Mark, can you, can you just briefly uh, explain where the exhibit's going to be set up at? We'll be set up in the uh, municipal lot just uh, north of the uh, Moose Club at Elmwood and Liberty, as I mentioned, starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow and then all day on Wednesday. Uh, We'll try to extend it as long as we have people coming in, but the closing hours haven't been determined yet. So hopefully people can find the time to get out there and uh, make a worthwhile visit. Jack. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my honor and, and uh, pleasure to be here in front of you today to talk to you about the 9-11 uh, exhibit. Uh, in my 32 years as a battalion chief and a fireman for New York City, uh, it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful job and a great career. And 9-11 has touched everybody in the country. I think uh, what we, we really want to get across from this 9-11 exhibit <clears throat> is to remind people of what happened to the whole country on that day, that terrible day in September. Because people have a short memory. And I always start my, my exhibit tours with asking people where they were on February 26th, 1993. And I get that blank stare that I'm getting now from everybody. Because that was the first bombing of the World Trade Center. And nobody remembers where they were. I remember where I was because I was a lieutenant on duty in the New York City Fire Department. I responded to the World Trade Center. And that was our warning of what was to come on 9-11. So it's important that we learn from our history, and that's the important thing why this 9-11 exhibit is down here, uh, to remind people throughout the whole country of what happened to this country, and it should never happen to us again. But I have to tell you the story how we got started, and, and out of some, something so bad as 9-11, some, some good things came out of it. And one of the good things is this Stephen Silla Tunnel to Towers Foundation that me and Richie Murray here volunteer for, uh, almost on a daily basis to do some good stuff uh, in Stephen's name. Stephen was a, a fireman off duty that morning. He just worked a night tour of 9-10. That morning he was going home to play golf with his three brothers in Staten Island, my hometown, Richie's hometown. He's on his way home, driving his car, heard about the plane into the tower, turned his car back around, went to his firehouse in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Stephen was a member of Squad One, an elite rescue unit in New York City Fire Department. Squad One was already on the scene of the World Trade Center. Stephen got into the firehouse, got all his gear, drove his car to the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, which is a tunnel that connects Brooklyn to Manhattan. 
You couldn't drive through any tunnels or bridges into Manhattan that day. They closed them down for security. Stephen got out, made a great choice in my mind, put 65 pounds of gear on his back, ran through the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, which is 1.7 miles long, and I'll tell you why I know that, up West Street, and there Stephen joined the rescue effort that morning. Unfortunately, Stephen, along with 342 other New York City firemen, died that morning. Richie lost eight guys at his firehouse. I was a battalion chief at the time. I lost 20 guys in my battalion uh, that morning. Stephen was only 34 years old, married to a beautiful wife, Sally, and the father of five small kids. Now that's a tragic story, and it could have ended there. But the Silla family, his three brothers and his three sisters, Stephen, however, was an orphan at age 10. I left that out. And his three brothers and his three sisters actually raised them. So not only did they feel, felt like they lost a brother, they felt like they lost a son that day. They got together and created the Stephen Silla Tunnel to Towers Foundation in honor of Stephen and to remember all those we lost that day, the 2,977 souls that were killed that day at the Pentagon, at Shanksville, and at the World Trade Center site. They created the foundation, and the foundations have been doing good, good deeds in Stephen's name ever since 9-11. Uh, we went down to uh, New Orleans after Katrina. We've been out to Haiti. We support an orphanage in Haiti because Stephen was an orphan himself. We've been out to Oklahoma after their uh, tornadoes. We've been up to Boston after the Boston Marathon bombings. We've been doing great de deeds in Stephen's name. But the best thing we do, and the most important thing we do, in my opinion, is that we build smart homes for a severely wounded service personnel coming home from the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan without their arms and legs. These guys are triple and quadruple amputees. We build them smart homes so they can live independently Wherever state, whatever city they want to live in, they can live in these homes and control these homes with, with a smartphone or an iPad. <coughs> okay? How we got started in 2008, Brenda Morocco was the first surviving quadruple amputee. He lost his arms and his legs. Another man from Staten Island. So Frank Silla, one of Stephen's brothers, was our chairman, went down to Walter Reed Hospital and told Brendan, we're going to do something for you because you're a Staten Islander number one. That's where the foundation's located, and we have to take care of our servicemen. And that's how the foundation got started, building these smart homes. To date, we've built about 18 smart homes all over the country. We have 20 in the works. We've done the four quadruple amputees. At last count, there was 43 triple amputees, and we're working our way down the list. How we raise our money for these smart homes is simply by having these runs to retrace Stephen's footsteps. I told you the, the battery tunnel was 1.7 miles long. So we have a run every year, the fourth Sunday in September in New York City, where we close down a battery tunnel. And you think traffic is bad in New York City. When we close down a major artery, it gets even worse. But we closed down this tunnel. We started out with 2,000 runners the first year. Last year, we had 32,000 runners retracing Stephen's footsteps right through that battery tunnel up West Street. And we have a big block party to celebrate uh, all those lives we lost on that day. That brings us out here to Medina. Mark Phillips and his staff has, uh, Mark came out to uh, New York to run the run in 2004, loved it so much, talked to the Silla family, got the idea in his head that we can bring a run out here, and that's just what he did. This is gonna be our third run out here. Uh, we're here to support him with the 9-11 exhibit to show everybody you know, uh, what happened to us on that day, and hopefully it never happens to us again. Uh, Basically, that's the story. We thank Mark for his volunteering, and he's got a great aide, Becky, over there. And uh, if there's any questions, we'll be out at the exhibit. Myself and Richie will be out there tomorrow at 10 to 4, and Wednesday, I believe, it's 12 to 6, and we might extend the hours if, if needed. I thank you for your time. Thank you. And Mark, thank you for all your efforts and putting it together. And we're still working on getting all these people here and all the people lined up down there signed up for that race, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Saturday. I gotta work. Saturday is, there any, is there anybody else that wishes to address council at this time? Is this the third time? Introduction and consideration of ordinances and resolutions. Ordinance 132.14, an ordinance authorizing job creation grant agreement for Discount Drug Mart, Inc. Moved to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it at this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Ms. Rice. 
Thank you, Mr. President. This re request is for the mayor to enter into a job creation grant agreement with Discount Drug Mart as they are expanding again through an acquisition of Hastings <coughs> Professional Medical Equipment. They will be relocating 25 new full-time jobs to their headquarters operation located at 211 Commerce Drive and creating 2.3 million in new payroll annually for the city. We're requesting the emergency clause um, to not delay their project. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment? Clerk, please call the roll emergency clause. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hilbert? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Clerk, please call the roll on the ordinance. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hilbert? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Ordinance 132-14 passes 70. Ordinance 133-14, ordinance providing for the conveyance of property at 529 West, Fri West Friendship Street, Medina City lot numbers 297 and 298 to Medina City uh, Development Corporation. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Ms. Rice? Thank you, Mr. President. In 2012, the city took possession of this residential property located at 529 West French Street due to delinquent taxes. Uh, the city had the house torn down, utilizing moving Ohio forward dollars through the county. Um, since the city had very little money invested in the property, we are requesting council to transfer the property to the Medina City Development Corporation, also known as the CIC, so that they may work towards selling the property for redevelopment. Uh, taxes were paid in February of this year in the amount of $1,333.20. And I think the city has had some expenses with regard to uh, maintaining the lot through mowing and um, I think Jansen took down one of the trees was a public nuisance. So um, that's it. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment? Uh, Mr. President. Mr. Lamb. Uh, as I stated at the Finance Committee meeting, I, um, when the CIC was formed, I, I think a lot of questions were raised about whether there's a benefit to the city and does the benefit to the city outweigh what you lose. And what you lose, of course, is that accountability through the typical processes that government has. And I agree that the CIC was important enough uh, that we should form it. My concern is, is, that, is this. That house was the house of people that mattered in this community. Through a number of reasons, it fell into disrepair. The city got the house, tore it down for free. It cost us almost nothing, with the exception of the taxes or the, um, the maintenance of the, the mowing. And cities all over the country are giving property and giving houses for a dollar to people in a neighborhood to help to rebuild the neighborhood. And I think that it's not appropriate to, for the CIC to sell this property and use the money for the purposes of the CIC. I think that it's, it's, it's funding the CIC on the back of the poorest neighborhood in town. And if I knew for a fact that the CIC would, it, would turn this over to a nonprofit without selling it, I would vote for it. But if the CIC is simply going to sell the property and keep the money, then I, won't, I can't vote for it. Thank, I, I, thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Lamb. I think the discussion with the CIC hasn't occurred yet, of course, because the property hasn't been given to the CIC. But I think that um, the CIC's goal of course is to uh, for economic development purposes and for revitalization of neighborhoods that otherwise didn't have anything i guess i'm i can't speak right now exactly what's going to happen with the property i think the property is going to be redeveloped i think the goal of the cic is to make sure that other families at least in that residential neighborhood use that property for residential purposes but beyond that i don't know if there will be consideration given not given what the purpose is is it a multi-family home single family home there's a lot of open issues that haven't been answered and I think you, what you were referring to is at least to a single family home. Yes, I understand that, but I think in this case, it might be a multifamily situation that the community wants to see occur there. I think discussions have to be had yet with respect to those in the community that would, has to occur in this area, so that hasn't happened yet. So I'm not really sure, as a member of the CAC board, exactly what's gonna happen yet. All I do know is that it's, it, the, <clears throat> the goal is to have it redeveloped. 
My goal too is to have it redeveloped, but but not but to have it redeveloped in a way that it improves the neighborhood and it isn't simply that it's sold to a developer. And I th- and and I I think that's my concern about the CIC is is you have three members you have three city council members on the board, yes. but the city council as a whole has totally lost control of what would happen to that property. Once we vote on this tonight, I have no voice in this anymore. The only voice you would have, of course, is attend the meeting and express that voice. But as a part as a voting member, you're correct. So how are you going to vote? Well, I don't even know the <laughs> the proposal yet, so I guess it's going to be difficult to vote because I've, <laughs> I've heard many different things to the public. There's going to be this happening, that happening. I don't think any concrete uh, proposal has been submitted to the CIC yet to vote on. So I, I guess I don't have an answer to your question at this time. That's difficult. Thank you. Is there any further discussion or comment? Mr. Coyne, <clears throat> yes, I, I don't agree with the fact that council's lost control. Council's intentionally a majority on the CIC. They have three voting members and out of a total of five. So just for clarification, council has not lost any control on the CIC. It was intentionally set up to give council control because it was council's money that started the CIC. Yes, thank you. And that is correct. And as far as a council member, I guess you can come and give us your opinion whether or not the three members on the board Adhere to that, depending on what the proposal is. I don't, I don't have an answer to that question because I don't know what the proposal is yet. Is there any further comment or discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hilberg? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? No. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Ordinance 133 14 passes 60 A's, one nay. There are two items to be added to the agenda Ordinance 134 and Ordinance 135. I'll make a motion to add ordinance 134, 114, and 135, 114. Second. Any discussion on adding ordinance 134 and 135? Will the clerk please call the roll on adding ordinance 134 and 135? Coyne? Yes. Hilberg? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Ordinance 134. 14, an ordinance amending ordinance 20813 passed December 9, 2013, amendments to the 2014 budget. Move to approve. Second. Discussion, Mr. Durham. Thank you, Mr. President. The, uh, the new appropriations here are ones a pass through of a donation. Even though the donation came from a, another source, we have to appropriate the money before we spend it. Uh, the second group are for a grant that is, runs from calendar of, of calendar year of, of July 1st, and so we have to do this at the middle of the year. And then the final one is for some acquisitions and for some insurance pay-throughs. Thank you. Any further discussion or comment? Clerk, please call the roll on your ordinance. Hilberg? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coin? Yes. Ordinance 134-14 passes 7 0. Ordinance 135-14, ordinance amending ordinance number 127-14 passed July 24, 2014, relative to the construction of the Madonna Square Public Restroom and Visitor Center. Move to approve. Second. Discussion? Mr. President. Mr. Shields. The emergency clause has been requested. I move to add it at this time. My second includes the emergency clause. Discussion on the emergency clause and or the ordinance. Mayor Hamill. This is um asking for additional funds to be set aside for the um, renovation and build out of the uh, old key bank drive through to create the uh, public restroom and visitor center. Um, the council originally set aside uh, $250,000 and the bid, the lowest bid came in at 350,000, uh, which was uh, very near the engineer's estimate, which was 343 or so. So um, in order to not hold this project up, uh, the goal of the bid is to have it open for the candlelight walk this, this uh, season. Um, and it's a very tight uh, build out. So without the emergency clause, we would not be able to accomplish that. So I re- respectfully request council to uh, pass it with the emergency clause. Thank you, Mayor. We had a lot of discussion prior to the council meeting this evening regarding the restrooms, the size of the restrooms, the funding of the restrooms, the additional $100,000, where that money would come from. I think we unanimously agreed that uh, we'd rather not use taxpayer funds to fund the additional increase in the costs associated with the restrooms and visitor center. And we're going to use the money from the electric irrigation funds, of which 154000 is left. We're going to take 100000 of that to apply to this project. And we believe the project's going to be a, a great addition to the square and a great addition to the events on the square. And hopefully it will be completed by the candlelight walk in order to be used and enjoyed by other 
um, residents and non-residents that come to the candlelight walk. Is there any further discussion or comment related to the emergency clause and or the ordinance? Mr. President. Mr. Colzar. Real brief, uh, like you just said, we had a lengthy discussion downstairs. Um, I, uh, I'm not opposed to the project. Uh, it's probably been three or four years since we really, or three years since we started talking about it. I'm all for it. It just seems that the, the costs um, ended up with a lot larger or continue to rise f further than I wanted. Um, uh, there was a uh, discussion downstairs about tightening the belt a little bit and reducing the size, which, uh, you know, I've, I think we, we should uh, shorten it a little bit or make it a little bit smaller, but uh, uh, the additional 100000 to go towards this project, um, yes, it is coming from the aggregational funds that we did with First Energy Solutions, but, uh, you know, we try to make the money uh, go as far as possible, and uh, to me, I think uh, the 350000 and plus the 320 or 330 we paid for the corner, and it is corner lot on the square, but uh, it's a little bit further than I wanted to spend on public restrooms up t uptown, so uh, we'll be voting no. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion or comment? Will the clerk please call the roll on the emergency clause? Uh, Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. <clears throat> Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hilber? Yes. Colasar? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Any further discussion on the ordinance? Clerk, please call the roll on the ordinance. Colasar? No. Lamb? Yes. Rose? Yes. Shields? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Coyne? Yes. Hilber? Yes. Ordinance 135 14 passes 6 yeas, 1 nay. Council comments? Mr. President? Mr. Simpson. Thank you. Uh, as you can tell by the speaker from uh, New York Fire Department uh, this evening, it's going to be worthwhile to visit the Never Forget uh, exhibit, which is, again, going to be right by the, the, news, the Moose parking lot on the north side of the Moose, the city parking lot, north side of the Moose. It, uh, trailer is about a $2 million trailer with artifacts, uh, from not only from 9-11, but uh, I think you're going to be amazed at some of the stories and uh, some of the exhibits that, that's inside. So take, take time to stop by and show your support. It's, it's free of charge. Uh, we're hoping to get some school children up to uh, be educated about 9-11. And again, it's, it's so we don't forget. The only other thing I want to bring up is on September 2nd at 7 p.m., we're, we're going to have our second of the year Ward 1 and 2 uh, community meeting. That's going to be at Claggett Middle School, September 2nd at 7 p.m. So anybody interested in, in stopping by and discussing our city, what we've done, what we haven't done, what we could do, uh, your concerns meet meet your council members on an informal uh, setting along with with members of the administration so that's all I have mr. president thank you thank you any other council comments mr. president mr. Colzar I have two brief comments uh, first I would like to thank uh, Scott, uh, Cub Scout troop 3508 uh, that went out to uh, Roscoe Ewing Park on the 16th of this month on a Saturday to uh, help clean up the banks of uh, Champion Creek through there. They do that annually, and they were just out there while we were on break. Uh, that troop is out of, I believe, Medina Presbyterian Church off of 18 on Burgundy Bay. And they, I think they had about 20 plus or minus volunteers that came out, and uh, it's part of their community commitment. And I just want to take a moment to say thank you for coming into Ward 3 and uh, helping uh, clean up our waterway. Uh, secondly, in reference to Waterway, uh, normally uh, the city of Medina does a creek cleanup, and I apologize this year in the early parts of June, I wasn't able to have that in my plans, but uh, on September 20th, uh, next month, on a Saturday from 9 to 12, we're going to do a little something different this year, which is still going to be geared towards, uh, you know, raising uh, recognition on the importance of our waterways. I'm sure if everybody stays in the news, uh, uh, Toledo, Ohio had uh, shut down their, their water to their, their customers because of algae bloom, but I think it was enhanced from uh, man-made um, elements as well um, with fertilizers and things of that nature. Um, and it's important to keep the waterways uh, 
uh, clean, and a lot of people don't know that uh, even the uh, catch basins in your street, uh, where you see the grates, those all flow right into our local uh, waterways that gets into Champion Creek or one of the other creeks in town to the west branch of the Rocky River, out to uh, Lake Erie, and uh, that same water we pump back to drink. So on September 20th, 9 to 12, uh, we're going to, uh, depending on how many volunteers we can get out, we're going to go around and stencil uh, uh, simple signs above the grates, letting uh, people in the neighborhood know that uh, it says no dumping, drains to river, drains to creek, uh, one of those. Uh, so it, it'll be an opportunity this year for those people out there didn't didn't want to get really muddy or wade in the creek or anything like that. We'll be up on dry land and uh, uh, putting these in uh, on top of the catch basins as many as we can and hopefully uh, continue that uh, into next year. Uh, so every uh, catch basin out, out in our community states and gives people more awareness of the water that drains and how important it is and where it goes and how our uh, impact as society has on it. Uh, so if anybody would like to uh, take part, uh, please uh, go to our city uh, website. My email address is on there, mcolasar at medinoh.org, or uh, give me a call at 330-725-6993. That's my home number. Uh, again, September 20th, 9 to 12. Uh, we will uh, meet up at City Hall and then uh, disperse from there. Um, so uh, hopefully you can get some volunteers, some groups out there to take part, and uh, let's make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Any other council comments? Mr. President? Mr. Rose? Yeah, thank you. Uh, as everybody knows, the Medina community is made up of many things. We've got uh, some fantastic buildings in the town. We've got excellent services. And we've got probably the world's best people in here. And I'd like to highlight one of them as one of my bright shining stars. Uh, These are people who just do something because it's the right thing to do. Um, on the first day of school, uh, down near Canavan School the, on Lawrence, uh, Bob Grady saw a, uh, a dead cat in the road and he felt sorry for the kids coming to school he didn't want to have their first day of school disrupted by the sight of a dead cat so he picked it up on his own and removed it from the uh from the area uh he he didn't want to have any kids having that as an image of their first day of school and so i just want to thank bob and uh, thank for the mayoral assist that uh, was out there put out there as well and making sure that bob didn't uh, have another accident there with other cars coming by so Bob thank you very much for going over and above to help the community thank you any additional council comments mr. president mr. Shields um, one other comment I just on behalf of all of us here on council we wanted to offer our condolences to your father to your sisters and to you and your family and the loss of your mother that occurred on the break so just wanted you to know we're all thinking about you and your family at this time thank you I, I appreciate that any additional council comments Hearing none, we're going to take a short break, and Mayor Dennis Hamill will give the state of the city address in a few moments. Thank you.